So I'm just having tea in my studio this morning. It's my first morning in this week because we had a bank holiday yesterday, so James and I stayed at home. But I'm just having tea with you, so let's have a bit of tea. It's not coffee this morning, it is tea. Herbal tea. I think it's got licorice in it as well, which is my favourite. So I'm coming up to my second birthday in lockdown. And also another milestone because I realised the other day that I have been a full-time freelance artist for one year um, and the anniversary has just passed for that. So I thought for this week's video I could share my process of how that happened for me and I'm hoping there might be some ideas, inspirations or insights um, for you if you also want to take your creative profession to um, being full-time career and being able to earn your living um, whilst doing it. So that's what I'm hoping for for this week's video um, and I'm going to share my process and my experiences of the past year and I want to be really honest as well about my experiences because it has been a bumpy ride, it hasn't all been downhill and easy, and easy breezy, it has been a lot of challenges and a lot of insecurities and a lot of um, fear as well. So yeah, I want to share that whole process with you. So I've got to start filming this week's video, even though I'm really, really grumpy this morning. So I don't know how this video is going to turn out. Uh, yeah, I've never quite been this grumpy when I've made a video. So yeah, it could be... Uh, interesting. So I'll try not to stray off topic and I've actually made myself a little list this morning to uh, help me stay on track and then hopefully I won't do the Wendy Waffle thing. So I'm going to share the three stages if you like of, of how this happened and this came about for me in, in, in this adventure of becoming a full-time artist. Um, the first part of that I will talk to you a little bit about really briefly what I was doing before the lockdown and then a little bit about what happened when the lockdown hit, um, the first lockdown anyway, because I think here we're in the third one. Um, and then also a little bit about um, my three sources of income and how I made that work for me. So that's kind of it in a nutshell, if you like. Mm -hmm. So I'll timestamp everything down below in the description box as well so that you can jump about um, into the bits you're interested in and then skip the bits you're not interested in, if you know what I mean. So before the lockdown hit, I was working towards becoming a full-time artist and I had part-time jobs um, as well as teaching my own art class here in this building. Um, so this building is really wonderful because not only does it have private offices, communal studios, it also has rooms that you can rent out. So if you are doing a yoga class, for example, you can rent the room out and run your class in it. And that's what I did with, a, with an art class. And I was running the art class. I did two classes a week, one evening class and one in the day. And I did that for over a year. And then just before the lockdown hit, I actually closed because I had a feeling that um, a lockdown was about to happen. So I think the week before lockdown, I actually closed my class. So that obviously cut that source of income off. And at that time, my part-time job, which I really, really loved, was working in a local shop. Uh, in a clothes shop um, and that shop had to close as well so that shut off that source of income as well so I was basically left with no sources of income when the lockdown hit and it was a really scary place to be um, not gonna lie I was really discombobulated about it because I'd worked really really hard to be able to earn enough money to pay my bills and also buy art supplies and little bits and bobs so yeah, it was a, a real blow to me. It really was. But at that point, just before lockdown, I had been working towards minimising my time at my part-time job and extending my work as, as an artist. So I was probably about 40% uh, part-time job and 60% working for myself at that point, if that gives you a rough idea. And I had built that up over the past two years of um, landing after our travels. So that was the point I was at when the lockdown hit. And then obviously I went to zero income. So I could have allowed myself to get really down at that point. And, and to be honest, part of me was really down about it. But for some reason, the, um, the warrior Wendy came out, if you like, and I decided really quickly 
to take what I was doing um, in the art class um, and do an online version of that just to give it a go and try it out and see if it was going to work for me. Um, I think I'd made one or two YouTube videos, so I hadn't videoed anything for years. I didn't have any equipment. I didn't know how to edit or anything like that. I had no idea what I was doing. So I just decided to jump headfirst into a, um, the deep end really with that. This is take two of the mini art kit video because when I lowered you down to the desk it didn't work properly, it didn't work very well. So I'm take two. I could do with a clapperboard. I'll make one. Kit, and I will try and put you onto my desk a little bit more successfully this time. I'm just going to go through really quickly the kit I initially brought home last week, which wasn't for any uh, self-isolation possibilities. I'm not going to use the self-isolation or the word quarantine because I don't like those phrases. So for me, I'm going to call it hibernating because I like to hibernate anyway. So that kind of feels more normal for me. And uh, hopefully I can still get in the studio um, for a little while longer yet. And who knows what's going to happen because everything changing changes so quickly at the moment. But in the meantime, let me go through my initial mini art kit. Um, and then I'll probably do another video in a minute where I'll go through my bigger box with more stuff. And I can't even remember what I put in there or whether I've got the stuff I need. So hopefully I have. Okay. So, so I remember packing up my art supplies into one of my big boxes in the studio and taking that home and then turning the camera on and yeah, using my phone just to film, turning my camera on and just um, yeah, making my very first Patreon video. Um, and just jumping ahead a little bit because I've just obviously mentioned the Patreon. The reason I picked Patreon was because it gave me a platform where everything was there. So I could upload videos, I could make posts, I could um, build a community of creative souls within that platform quite easily without me needing to know anything technical or anything like that. And it also gave me the ability to create different tiers, so different values had different rewards. So I could make some of the tiers really accessible because obviously I wasn't the only person that had lost my income, so I understood that. So my initial plan for the Patreon was to do an online class. And it has since evolved into something less formal, if you like. But at that point, bearing in mind what I had been doing and that I just wanted to take that online at that point, that's what I did. So I emailed everybody that had ever come to the art class. And some weeks I had a full class, some weeks it was empty, and some weeks it was middle. Um, but I, I just emailed everybody and said I was starting this Patreon page to take the class online. Um, and I basically made the weekly class the same price as one week. So you were basically getting four weeks classes for the same price as one class. Um, and obviously the reason I did that was because I wanted to make it really good value, really appealing to people to join in uh, and to, to begin to build this, this community um, and maintain myself a little bit of income as well at the same time. Hello and welcome to this week's video for our Patreon and obviously starting a new project here, woo, exciting, and I am just going to show you a few things that I've gathered before we start, um, just to give you some ideas of what kind of things you can choose for making the altered book that we're going to be doing next. Well, if you feel like it, obviously, if you just want to watch and you want to integrate some of the ideas into art you're already making, that's absolutely fine and a lovely way of working. And if you want to do your very own altered book, then you're going to need, obviously, to start with an altered book or two. Um, I've actually got three here, which I'm going to be dipping into. So that's what I did. I did a weekly Patreon video where I videoed myself make, making art and talking about my process and all the things I'd been doing in art class and through that process slowly but surely I learned how to film better I learned about sound I learned about editing I learned about putting together something a little bit more interesting and I also found my own style and rhythm with the video making um, and I think it's a bit like painting isn't it where you paint and paint and paint 
trying to find your style and, and you don't know what your style is and you've just got to keep going until it starts to emerge um, and, and it was the same for me with video making and I had this style um, personal to me that started to emerge and I was really enjoying the process of videoing the creative side of that as well as the editing process which I really wasn't expecting at all I thought I would absolutely not like the editing um, and, th and that side of things but it was the opposite I absolutely loved it and I found it as creative as making my artwork so that was a lovely surprise it also helped keep my own momentum up with my own creativity and it helped keep me motivated during these really strange discombobulating times that, that was the first lockdown. And if it hadn't been for my early patrons who I'm ever grateful for, I don't think I would really have got to becoming a full-time artist and I don't think I would have got the confidence to really put myself out there. So thank you to those people for that, for that early day support. Um, yeah, truly kept me going. And I know that some of you are still in the Patreon, still there, they've been with me a whole year now, so thank you so, so much for that and the encouragement and support I've received during that time. It, it, it's been a real circle of, of, of love and inspiration for me. And uh, yeah, I can't stress that enough. Mm. So that leads me on to my second source of in income, which was my Etsy shop. And I'd had my Etsy shop for quite a few years and I hadn't really bothered that much with it. I hadn't kept up uh, my momentum with adding new items and um, doing the SEO needed and things like that, which isn't my strong point at all. I did my best with it and I did make a few sales um, and, you know, but it was really slow and it certainly wasn't going to sustain me and help me pay my bills. So what I did at this point as well was to market my Etsy shop a little bit more. So just putting out on social media if I had some new things going in and I started making a lot more of the canvas squares and I started getting commissions for, for making the little canvas squares as well. So the little, um, I think there's one up there, little canvas squares. Yeah, I started to build up uh, a little bit more success and more sales in my shop to help um, bring in a bit of income as well. Um, and, and I was really enjoying that, you know, walking to the post office with parcels and uh, yeah, feeling really, really good about, you know, selling some of my things. And I didn't have lots of package materials and things like that. I hadn't got to that point. I was just recycling boxes and packaging that I had. I wasn't even sure how to ship my prints safely and things like that. So I was really learning in a steep way because obviously if you have an order for something, you want it to, to arrive in, in top condition. So there was all the packaging side of it um, and then needing to restock my shop. So this was a requirement as well for me to build a little bit more income as well because I had layout costs for new stock to keep the shop um, full of beautiful things. So that was the early days where I was trying to build up the Patreon community a little bit and also run the shop. And this moved me on to my third source of income because as I explained a minute ago about doing the Patreon and creating videos and editing videos and enjoying that process, I decided to start a YouTube channel and I decided to do this three years ago and I think I mentioned in last week's video I got shy um, and I changed my mind but I changed my mind the other way um, in I think the end of June last year I put my first proper YouTube video together and put it up on, on my channel and at first nothing happened at all really. I had a few people watching and a few comments and a few subscribers and that slowly but surely started to grow. And as that started to grow, that then encouraged me to share more. And so what I decided to do with my YouTube, because I'd kind of already evolved my video style if you like, and also had got a little bit more used to talking to the camera and things like that, I really decided to follow my heart and be authentic and no not share every personal detail of my of my life or anything like that um, because I am a really private person as well but to share enough that I was shining my light showing my soul if you like so that's what I decided to do
And yes, at that point, I started to build momentum with the YouTube channel. And there was a couple of my videos that were picking up on views and things like that. And that started to help my channel to grow. And the other thing I, I started to share out there is, is the things I was doing. So for example, the relationship between mental health, well-being, and being creative, um, that whole thing. Um, and people seemed to really enjoy that conversation. Um, so that was attracting new people to my channel as well as um, the art journaling stuff as well that I had been doing for years. So I basically just did what I was doing, but put it online, put it on in a, in a public platform, um, not behind the Patreon wall, but actually out there. Um, yeah. So obviously there's ups and downs and uh, yeah, the, the beginning of that process, it was really difficult and the momentum, you know, took a little while to build um, with subscribers and things like that. So I, ju I just kept making videos and I just kept doing my best and really putting my heart and soul into what I was doing. I was working long hours. I was working really, really hard doing what I loved uh, and putting that energy into it. Uh, and slowly but surely it did start to build momentum and I felt like I was on the right path at that point. I felt like I was doing what I was meant to be doing. And And then around November, December time last year, uh, I started to be able to um, earn enough money to pay all my bills again, which was absolutely wonderful. And even gave me the freedom to be able to invest in some better filming equipment, some better sound equipment, um, even some art supplies, because I'd been using budget art supplies for years. And so to invest in some, some proper quality, professional art supplies has been absolutely mind blowing as well. So. Yeah, that, that's been amazing. I think I'll just say at this point as well, if you are at that point where you are either part in your part-time work or even if you're in your full-time work and you want to be doing your own thing 100% of the time, whatever that may be, um, just have faith and hope in yourself and, and really do follow your heart and follow your dreams. Even if it's just baby steps to making a little plan of a course that you want to write or something that you want to make or share or open a shop, um, just take a little tiny step in that direction and dip your toe in if you like to how that feels. I think we only know the right things to do next and the decisions to make and things like that when we're actually experiencing it and experiencing how we feel doing it. Um, so if we feel uplifted, we should definitely follow our joy uh, as much as we can with things like financial and, and the responsibilities of paying bills and things like that. Because obviously being able to sustain ourselves is, a, is an important part of, you know, well-being. So I think to finish off this video, it's just um, maybe a little recap on, on where I'm at now. And um, it hasn't all been a downhill, easy peasy ride. There's definitely been ups and downs for me. And if you've watched any of my other vlogs, I'm sure you will recognize um, some of the videos where I look a bit down or I look, look a bit overwhelmed. And, I, and indeed, I talk about that side of things as well. It's not just all shiny and sparkly. Um, the world of YouTube is, is not like that at all. But yeah, I like to share the whole picture. And I think by doing that, it can sometimes feel quite vulnerable. Um, and I do sometimes feel a little bit shy um, putting things out there sometimes. And I'm, I'm just like everyone else. I, I, I often feel lost and overwhelmed, unmotivated, all those things. But all we can do is do our best. And so that's what I do. And I put as much energy as I can into my self-care routines and so that I can keep my light shining as brightly and as polished as possible. And then that hopefully shines through in, in the content I put out. So yeah. That's what I'm aiming for anyway.
So I talk about self-care and mental health and well-being quite a lot on my channel. And I do prioritise my own self-care above most other things. Not everything, but most things I do prioritise that aspect of life. Um, and I find that I'm a much better person and I'm much more useful to the other people in my life if my batteries are fully charged as much as possible anyway. And boy, has that been tricky during the lockdown times. But um, yeah, I'm still struggling with finding a work-life balance. I'm learning to respect my energy levels much more. And I am learning to recognise when I need to work and also when I need to rest. That inhale-exhale relationship, if you like. So hopefully I've not waffled too much and um, this video has been interesting to some of you. Um, and, and that's my journey so far. And it's been an up and down ride. And it's not just been one year of me getting to this point. There was a lot of years building up to the point of setting up the art class, for example. Um, it took a long time to, to get to that point. So there's a lot more to the story before this year, but I just thought I'd concentrate on, on what's happened this year, partly because it's been a really strange year for everybody. Yeah, and it's been a really interesting, bumpy, exciting, scary, vulnerable uh, ride, um, just been thrown into the deep end because of the lockdowns. And so what I thought was going to be a gradual process of me dropping more of my part-time work and building up more momentum with my art side of things, I was just cut off from all my sources of income and thrown in completely um, into the lion's den if you like to see if I would survive and thrive and thank goodness that it's worked so well for me. So if there's anyone out there that wants to go full time doing your own thing whether it's something creative and being an artist or something else there's many many ways of doing it and it doesn't necessarily have to be putting yourself out on YouTube and things like that and starting a Patreon, although those things have worked really well for me. So whatever it is that you want to do to be doing what you love for, on a full-time basis, I would give my one piece of advice and that would be follow your heart, follow your own path and, and don't look around too much at what other people are doing, just go within and then react from the inside out if you like, because that's what I did. And I hadn't really done that before in the way that I did it when the lockdown hit. And that's when I started seeing my path, if you like, and started seeing some results from following that. Um, so that would be my one piece of big advice. And for me, what does that look like? It looks like going out in nature, sitting under a tree on the ground and pondering and thinking and soul searching and yeah, that, that's the one thing that's, that's made the difference in this year. So all I can say is thank you so much for watching and commenting and liking and subscribing and checking out my shop and being on my Patreon page as well. All of that has helped support me and I can't thank you enough. It's been a wonderful yet scary journey. Um, yeah. So if you have any questions about anything that we've been talking about in this week's video, just leave them down below um, and I'll see if I can come back to you. And yeah, or leave me a comment to say where, where you're at in your, in your career um, and whether you're at that place where you're able to do what you love, even some of the time. And as always, thank you so much for watching and keeping me company and supporting me in all my online places. Um, I really appreciate you and I send loads of love and big soft hugs. Try to keep your lights bright and I will see you in the next one. Bye for now. Bye for now. Bye. We got a brand new day. Good love is on the way. And if you take my hand, I'll walk with you to Georgia. Have you ever been in love? I dove in from high above And if the answer's no, well then I'd like to get to know ya